she is. Hey, guys. Why is that making noise? <laughs> what is that about? Oh, I know why. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. All right. Well, anyway, hey, it's uh, hey, it's us. Hey. Hey, man. That was 100% no echo. <laughs> With the, Well, we don't know. I'm saying it now. So that if people hear an echo, that's their fault. It's not us. <laughs> it's, it's, it's you. It's you. Fault. I would love to blame you guys. Yes. As long it as would make, I don't have to take any blame. It would make our lives so much easier, honestly. Yes. Just shift the blame to someone else. Hello, everybody. We're here. It's Wolf Dead Podcast. It's yes. Tuesday. Yes. You it's know what that means. It's 8-ish o'clock. Yeah. Sorry which, I'm late. Which means it's Wolf Dead Bedtime Podcast. Bedtime routine ran a little long. Somebody was very upset I had to go run and do a podcast. <laughs> anyway uh oh boy howdy did a lot happen yes last week a surprising amount we had like nothing last week and then all of a sudden oh we gotta release news yeah i forgot uh i wanted to bring this up last week we said nothing happened <laughs> and apparently i never read comments yeah i don't know what made me decide to read the comments from last week yeah uh there were a couple that were upset that we said that nothing happened uh -huh. because i had announced that i had left the nintendo podcast right and i know that none of you people care that i'm not on the <laughs> nintendo podcast i think what happened was People from the Nintendo podcast were looking for more information. Okay. So they came to this podcast. Right. I had already explained myself on the Nintendo podcast and will probably be explaining myself for the next month while right. I continue to do yeah, that. Yeah. So I don't want to do that again. Okay. This will be business as usual. I just wanted to say, yeah, I left the Nintendo <laughs> podcast. Go fucking watch that episode if you want to hear more about that. Holy shit. Anyway. And then wait six months for my drama video to drop about <laughs> the whole thing. Anyway, you uh. people here in the live chat, you people who come to the uh, Wolf Den podcast all the time, love you so much. Yeah. You guys, uh, you guys, you guys know what's up. You guys are good. We like you. Everything's everything's great. Anyway, yeah. nothing happened last week. <laughs> this week, everything happened. Yes. All right. Uh, anyway. Um, hi. Oh well. But, uh, 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 we're going to talk about what the kids really want for Christmas yes. this year. Yes, because I don't know if you know this, everybody, but it's December. It's Christmas time or Hanukkah, if that's what you do. Mm -hmm. um, Did that start? I think no. so. I don't know how that works. Our Jewish friends in the chat, please let us know. Um, so, yeah, it's the holiday season. Thursday. Thursday, okay. Uh, people want games for Christmas, but the youngins. Oh, <laughs> your, your camera's frozen. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I knew I should have worn my hat. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can see why I cut my hair. Um, there you go. There you you're back. Can. You're a little out of focus. But That's fine. Uh, it's the story of my life. So the, everyone wants games this holiday season, but the, the youngins want different things for their games. Uh, and we will get into that when we but discuss first. it. But first, it's the start of the, it's the first Tuesday of the month, which means if you are subscribed to PlayStation Plus... You get yourself some free games, buddy. Free games. Yeah. There's also another one I added, but we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, PlayStation Plus, free game. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah we well, don't do Xbox anymore because they don't do it anymore. No, they just have Game Pass Core, which is 25 games, like, permanently. Mm -hmm. Not permanently. They'll, like, cycle games in and out. When they start to add new games to Game Pass Core, we will update you, people. But PlayStation... Why is my Ember Mug not turning on? I don't know. Is it desynced? I or does it need a charge? I guess. I don't know. I'll tell you what, though. This... Also, why is my phone connected as a microphone to my mouth? <laughs> Everything sucks. I'll tell you what, though. This, this uh, screen wave cup that you offloaded on me, it's actually great. I gave you a screen wave yeah, cup? Yeah, it keeps when things that? hot and cold. Like When did I give you time? that? I don't know. You're just like, here, I don't want this. <laughs> you know, I'm Bob Wolf. I don't want this shit. You know, <laughs> screen wave's in a lot of trouble right now. Oh. Uh, did you watch H Bomber Guy's video? Yes, I was actually really Screen happy. Screen Wave is in it. I was actually really happy the GTA trailer dropped last night, so I had all day to watch this one. Mm. I mean, great video. It didn't have to be four fucking hours long. It, it could have been 20 minutes. Yeah. But, but yes, I did see the Screen Wave. Uh, I did thing watch come up. all four hours of so it. I think I. I finished it today. It yes. took me three or four days. To I also, I, I like skipped through a bunch of it. Uh, Todd in the Shadows, who I follow regularly, had a follow-up video uh, going over um, 
the uh with the main subject of the video james stanton i don't remember all of his like lies and like incorrect stuff and that was like an hour and a half okay so i watched it all i'm all up to date but yes i did see h bomber guys video and um your management being yes featured. <laughs> screen wave is uh our management company and uh, they are in that video because they kind of took over some work on angry video game nerd stuff they took over pretty much his channel yeah, yeah. and uh they're, they're not people aren't very happy about their work on his yeah channel, so uh that was fun that was fun. <laughs> i was like oh i know that guy oh, oh. no oh, no <laughs> <laughs> but anyway yes um where what what happened to, okay we're okay free games December, Yay! December PlayStation Plus game free starting games. today you can get lego 2k drive for the playstation 4 and playstation 5 you can get power wash simulator <gasps> on the playstation 4 and playstation I didn't 5 know that was on playstation oh it is now uh and sable for the playstation 5 Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Sable. Oh, I wanted to try that. Yeah, not a Very... not a bad month. It's a you know, it's I don't want to say it's a mid tier month, but it's not like you know, we we didn't get any triple A. It's games. okay. Yeah, it's we okay. got we got a good selection of games. We got a, a fun arcade racing game. We got Power Wash Simulator. Flo says Lego Two K Drive is a great game. Is it like Burnout? It's looking a little. Bit I hope like it's it. like Burnout. There aren't as many good like arcade racing games anymore. Yeah uh sable i want to try it's very mobius looking yes uh okay not a, not a bad month i'd yeah. say uh there is some more free games you can get if you have a nintendo switch online oh in europe oh. i'd imagine this come is this should come to everybody usually they're just late uh but yeah this is a suica game i like suica game okay you don't know anything about Suica. i don't game. know anything about suica game this is a big like stream game Okay. It's a puzzle game. Uh, it's basically Poyo Poyo, but it's physics based. Oh, okay. so like the, the the fruits can move around and stuff. Oh, okay, I but got it. it is the next free game trial, so it's not a free game completely, but it, the trial is free from the seventh to the eleventh. So basically, this weekend in Europe, so far confirmed. Uh, sweet game. But those free game trials, like you can basically play the whole game. Yeah. So yeah, for 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 the weekend, yeah. you you can play Sweet Game for free. Stop it stop it uh and it's great i played it it's very actually i don't think i played the switch version i played a browser one which is worse and mm -hmm. i played uh the pico 8 version which is okay okay uh but this looks really good uh so give it a try this weekend if you're in the eu i'd imagine again that it might get announced for america mm -hmm. soon because uh, it'd be weird if only europe got that free game trial and that's it for your free games okay also uh apple arcade we're getting the sonic game soon yes right? when is uh, that today actually oh yeah i i subscribed to apple arcade just to play that game and i haven't played it yet i'm gonna download it right now yeah i've heard it's good sonic it's like a full ass sonic game yeah okay i don't want sonic drive through i don't want sonic dash she's sonic dream something it's on my phone. Go Sonic, go MLG. Uh, no. It's like the one of the top it's, searches. Yeah. <laughs> no. Would you say Sonic Dream? Sonic Dream something. Wasn't that the name of one of the uh, fan games? Sonic Dream Team. Yes, that's it. All right, I'm downloading it. Yeah, All there was right. like a Sonic Dream like fan game that was really fucked up. Yeah, I know so exactly what you're talking it's about. It's weird that yeah. they went with that name. Anyway, let's hear about what all the kids want for Christmas. Yes. So, the elect the Entertainment Software Association, the ESA, our best friends, we sarcastic. Um, the ESA shares recommendations for parents to help keep families safe, uh, safely and responsibly enjoying video games. The Electronic Entertainment Association, ESA, surveyed U.S. adults and children ages 10 to 17 to find out what Americans are asking for this holiday season and learned that kids are most likely to ask their parents uh, video game for, sorry, uh, they are most likely to ask their parents for video game related presents, about 72%. Requests for video game gifts are followed closely by money slash gift cards, 70%, clothes slash accessories, 66%, and electronics slash tech items such as phones and smartwatches at 62%. 
Fewer wish lists include physical toys Hold and on. games. I'm having a hard time. Okay. That doesn't equal a hundred percent. I think it's I think it's you know, you could probably pick like multiple things. So like one kid oh, probably okay. said, I want Okay. I want your video game related stuff. I want gift cards. I want I don't know any kid who wants clothes. I know. I'm shocked that that is so I high. I still get mad when I get clothes for Christmas. <laughs> I don't. I. I don't mind. I don't mind the clothes. Uh, fewer wish lists will include physical toys and games, tickets and experiences, um, arts and crafts, and books. Sixty-two. Twenty-six percent books. Yeah. Thirty-eight percent. Thirty-six percent nerds. Thirty-eight percent only want physical toys and games. That's pretty that's, low. That's interesting. That's pretty low. The majority of both uh, girls, 59%, and boys, 86%, say they plan to ask for video game gifts uh, for the holidays, with the top five specific asked, asks being for game subscriptions at 39%, game consoles at 38%, Game Gear slash accessories, thirty two percent. They can't write that. The Game Gear is coming back. <laughs> <laughs> we win. The second they, kids win. They can't do that. In game currency at twenty nine percent, and physical video games at twenty two percent. Interesting. Meanwhile, about one one in three adults say they plan to buy video game gifts for themselves or others the uh, this holiday, with the number jumping to fifty seven percent for parents. Adults who say they will be buying video game related presents are planning to spend an average of four hundred and eighty five hundred dollars. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Sorry, four hundred and eighty five dollars <laughs> on Christmas on on these gifts. They're gonna spend half a million dollars. on yes. Christmas. Gift. They're going to spend four hundred eighty five dollars on these gifts. I want to be their kids. Yeah, Jesus. And then the rest of the article is just about how you can use the uh, ESRB ratings and parental locks and stuff. To so sure. uh, I'm not surprised. Uh, digital's been growing. Uh, yes. I've actually I've been surprised at how slow digital sales have been going. I thought it would have yeah. been a lot quicker, especially this generation. Especially because like you know, stores that are getting rid of their physical movies mm -hmm. are keeping their physical games to sell. Yeah, you know, because I think a lot of parents like to actually give their kids a physical thing uh as a gift and like it's easier for people to just like grab it in a store and give to somebody rather than like a gift card i'd be interested to see how much uh things like the steam deck and pc handhelds contribute to the rise of digital oh yeah media because there is no disc drive well anything. i think the fact that like the ps4 and the xbox one uh, since day one, you can download the games in addition to buying them physically. I think that went a long way to like, because that's, that, that's over 10 years ago now. Yeah. That went a long way to like establishing this new normal that we're in. I think I, I think the next console is a big possibility that there's no oh, drive at yeah. all. And we saw Xbox was thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I have, I've been doing gift guides for Christmas the last couple of years, like a video on like what to buy yeah. for like the gamer. Um, and for the past couple of years, I have not talked about any games specifically. Yeah. Um, I think buying a game for somebody who plays video games is tough because they probably, if they want it, they have it already. Yeah. Uh, even a kid knows what they want. They yeah. know what they want to play. You can't just buy a, I mean, they, I guess if they're young enough. You can just buy a game and be like here. Yeah. You know, but uh or or if they're not that into games, mm -hmm. you can just buy a game and be like here. But for the most part, especially if you're watching a Wolf Den video, I feel like you're gonna probably they're they're probably gonna have what they want already. Yeah. You know? Uh so I've been uh saying that people should just get an e shop card or a gift yeah. card or, or something. Uh I'm surprised uh, also too that in game currency ranks higher than physical games so i mean because yeah. like fortnite and roblox those are like the two biggest games in the world and they basically run on in-game currency so it makes sense that like that would be but that feels like very specific you know it's, i think they just make so much money yeah they sell so much in-game currency that uh that it just eclipses physical game sales. right but also too like you have to know the kid is playing Fortnite. It's pretty, you know, safe to reason. If the kid has a Nintendo, you can just get the Nintendo gift card, and yeah. that covers everything. 
Whereas like a V Bucks gift card, that's like very specific to that one game. Oh, you're saying that um, you would expect a specific console to eclipse uh, V Bucks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, can you use an eShop gift card to buy V Bucks on a on a Switch? I don't see why not, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't play Fortnite. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how that works. I mean, I would imagine. Like, I mean, the way it works on Apple. I mean, that's why they got sued was yeah. because uh, uh, you have to give them a kickback. Mm-hmm. Lord DC says you can. Okay. Okay. Wolf Den Dad in the chat is just going on about the wind tower suites yeah. and the net jet. Holy I'm, shit! I'm gonna put the, put him on blast in the chat <laughs> okay. right now because he he texts us in a in a separate family group outside of the regular family oh, chat that we have. We're starting. We're starting. Uh, <laughs> so because I, I asked my wife if she saw it, and she said no. And I'm like, oh, this because this is for original wolves only. I guess you and Hannah are not a wait, part whoa, of this. Wait, whoa, whoa, uh, wait. This was like last week. Okay. He, when he asked for the that uh tire pump that he wanted. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. He, basically he wants a toy. <laughs> so I responded, okay, since we were saying what we want, I want the McFarlane Toys uh 89 Batmobile that comes with the Michael Keaton Batman figure. <laughs> it's the same price as your pump, but my <laughs> response was, oh, ask Santa for it. Dad, I'm 36 years old. I know Santa Claus isn't real. What? <laughs> so <laughs> You have a child. I don't. <laughs> it's important that they know the truth now, so that they're not disappointed later. You're not. In life. You're not raising your kids on a in a world where Santa exists. I'm not raising. Yes. <laughs> I was gonna uh, get him the tire pump that I have because I got one and it's yeah. awesome. But then uh, it's more. It's more expensive. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, <laughs> now, where, now everyone's mad at me for breaking this. <laughs> Will likes to spoil things on the on the Wolf Den uh, yeah. podcast. The newest one is that Santa's real. Wait till you hear about the Easter Bunny. Uh, Wait till okay. you hear about how the angry video game nerd doesn't write some stuff anymore. Oh, <laughs> uh, um, good times! Good times. Uh, we were talking about digital media. Yes, uh, I, I'm not surprised V Bucks uh, uh, is eclipsing every other yeah. digital game sales. I mean, the number one most specific thing people are asking for is game subscriptions. Now, I'm imagining that means your Game Pass, your PlayStation Plus. So, uh, I'd ima- if I was a kid, like, mm-hmm. you know, that doesn't have a job, yeah, uh, I would also want that. Like, you want to yeah. be able to play with your friends and stuff. I mean, a lot of games you could play without that. But yeah. uh, I'm an adult with my own income, so yeah. I can have all of these subscription services and not have to think about it. But, like, a child would have to be like, oh, I only have, like, a month left in my... Uh, playstation plus yeah. or whatever counterpoint to that i'm an adult who can buy all this stuff and yet i don't because they're very expensive nowadays yeah, yeah. so i have to uh reevaluate <laughs> my xbox my game pass core as it's now called lapsed i didn't renew it but the games i claimed previously are still showing up in my library are those just gonna go Your away game pass games or or my xbox. games with gold oh no those should be good but if they're but the Xbox One games, I if I try to download those, I shouldn't be able to play them. But they're still showing up in my library. Why shouldn't you be able to play them? Because I don't have uh, Game Pass anymore. What, you keep saying Game Pass. You you mean it's confusing. You mean Xbox Gold? Uh, yeah, I don't have Xbox Gold anymore, which became Game Pass Core. I thought Game Pass. Oh God! I thought Xbox Live Gold was unique in that you just needed Xbox Live for the month the game was out, and then you could download it and just play it. It's like it was like PlayStation Plus, in that I thought one of them was different. One of them you needed to hold on to the subscription, and one of them you didn't need to hold on to it. No, they both they both work the same way in that for the duration of the month of uh, that the game is available, as long as you get it within that month, you get the game. Uh, for as long as you're subscribed. Once your subscription lapses, you lose access to the game. Mm-hmm. But the games are still showing up in my library. I thought they would just disappear. I mean, try to play one. Okay. I think for Xbox, you keep it. And for PlayStation, you lose it. That's for Xbox 360 games, you keep it. Because they, they weren't able to implement a proper uh, like DRM okay. when the 360 was out. Okay, we'll try it. Mm-hmm. Go home and try it. <sighs> Maybe I will. 
This is why we were a PlayStation family, but now PlayStation's online service is trash. Why? Because it's less confusing? Because it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've always been trash compared to like Xbox Live. Uh, in the you, grand scheme of things. In, in, what, in what way? The, I agree, but you need to explain. Server reliability, uh, features being offered, especially on the PlayStation 3. Um, it's like little things like that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the free games and stuff. But yeah. but Xbox started to get a lot worse really yeah. quick. Uh, anyway, we got a lot of notifications that I didn't read in the beginning. DJ Skeletor, thank you for five whole gifted subs. Ray Zeflin, thanks for the 58 months. It's Wednesday, my dudes. Kriegasm, which is a Twitch emote. Oh, boy. Will we'll for some of us. Well, for some of us. <laughs> it's Wednesday for some... Oh, okay. Yeah. Hello. Well, thank you. Just piling up. Thanks for the 19 months. Hi, bros. Hi. Razzle Jazzle. Thanks for the 38 months. DJ Skeletor. Thanks for 100 bits. Again, Ra- Gamer Lady. Thanks for the 26 months. Wolf Den Podcast. One of my favorite podcasts. Keep it going. <laughs> this this one is going to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Caleb Fox. Thanks for the 17 months. I'm joining late, so I might have missed it, but KOTOR is currently free on Prime Gaming. Oh. We need to start including other stuff. There's so many of them now, though. There's Prime. There's uh, Epic. I'm sure Ubisoft gives away free games. Maybe we should only include it if there's something good. Yeah. Jay Bonilla. Jay Bonilla. Jay Jay Guy. Thank you for the 11 months. I appreciate it. Uh, Anyway. So, yeah. Again, I always recommend just getting gift cards for for yeah. people. Uh, there's plenty of like accessories and stuff that I'm sure the gamer in your life probably doesn't have. But yeah. uh, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna do a gift guide this year because I'm already late and there's already too many things that I need to talk about. Yeah, there's too many products that came out that I'm all backed up on. So I'm just you can do, do a that. you can do a TikTok or a YouTube short. I might like, do get, get gift cards. Maybe yeah, right. Maybe I will do that. Hey, see, I got ideas. Uh, I I'm, I might have to do some shorts on some of the like retro handhelds that I didn't get to make a video on because I have a stack of them. Yo, Bob, so you're the emulator guy, right? I found an emulator at Walmart for $10 and was excited to put my own games on it to see how well it would work. Then I realized after taking it apart that it had no SD card, so now I'm sad. Well, it was 10 bucks. Yeah, and you could probably find an SD card at Walmart for 10 bucks. No, 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 you, you, like you can't even... I know what he's talking about. Oh. You can't even put one in there. Oh. It's those things are garbage. Mm. Ten dollars though. So anyway. Uh all right. So I guess that's that's all we need to talk about with what kids want these days. Kids want gift cards. Yes. Kids want the freedom to buy whatever they want. Yes. So don't try to buy them something. Let them buy themselves something. Uh, we can move on to the biggest news. Yes, the actual biggest news. The actual biggest uh, news. The GTA 6 trailer came out. It was supposed to come out today, uh, but apparently it got leaked last night. And so Rockstar's like, well, it leaked, so here it is. Yeah, that was a crazy uh, couple hours on, yeah. on Twitter. Uh, everybody going nuts about it. Uh, it had... Where, where's the official one? There's... You know, I'm curious to see what games... So GameSpot and IGN re-uploaded it. I still don't really know exactly why they do that or how that works. Yeah. If they get paid to do that, if they just do it and there's, like, an understanding that, like, it's okay for them to do that. Yeah. Or if they're asked to do that. I'm sure PlayStation and Xbox, their YouTube channels probably also have it because it's going to be on those systems. Yeah, well, that I understand because it's yeah. like a partnership. Uh, Well, the Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer has 95 million views yes as of one day it hit a a couple tens of millions in like less than an hour yeah this might have broken a couple of records i think it did i forgot the specific one that it did but i think it's like right behind like a bts music video for like the most views in like 24 hours that makes sense yeah uh here it is it looks great yes Looks, looks beautiful uh it is back in vice city uh rockstar's pastiche parody uh creation of miami florida Mm -hmm. uh i believe you get access to an entire state an entire well uh grand theft auto 5 was in san andreas yeah san andreas is the entire state like they 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 call it they call it a state okay so i think this is going to be similar 
you okay. get access to maybe not a whole state but like most of a state okay um it looks like there I, I saw that there were pictures of like the bridge to key west yeah so you get like a key west esque kind of area uh there are a lot of uh cell phone videos yeah of real real florida men yeah <laughs> So that's uh, interesting. Uh, that sounds are, like a lawsuit. People are already speculating that um, a big feature of this game is going to be like social media posting. Because um, mm-hmm. you do see a lot of like it looks like, you know, TikToks and like uh, Instagram videos and stuff. Yeah. Um, so that might uh, be a factor into gameplay. Um, you see for the first time a female protagonist uh, who's going to be a main player. And it looks to be uh, featuring like a Bonnie and Clyde style love story. Which is her and her partner. That's interesting because the last game had three characters and this only has two. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's fine. Yeah, I think, you know, scaling it down. If they scale it down to two characters, that probably means there's more you can do in the world. Yeah. Which has always been like the main focus of the game. They're, they also have seemed to have kept a lot of their humor. There's a lot of like little things that are, are like silly goofy. Like yeah. A lot of the, the like billboards mm-hmm. and stuff are like a little silly. Um. Yeah, I mean, otherwise, there's, like, nice lighting and stuff, but really, this just looks like Grand Theft Auto V. <laughs> I gotta be honest, it looks like the, the same. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't expecting, like, big revelations in this trailer. Like, you know, anything that they could add or change or whatnot. Like, at a certain point, Grand Theft Auto is gonna be Grand Theft Auto. Like, you, there's only so much you can do to it, you know, and still have it be, you know gta Mm. i mean aside from like the social media stuff i don't really see anything that's dramatically different from what grand theft auto 5 was or even grand theft auto 4 you know yeah no this uh i mean i think grand theft auto 5 specifically because of uh it was a lot more recent but yeah i think there's something about the animation okay it just goes right to the girl's ass but there's something about the animations and the way that people move that's very Grand Theft Auto mm-hmm. and takes you out of the realism of how nice the world looks. Like the animations aren't great. Yeah. Compared to like all of the other visuals. Something's like off. Well, uh, it's still um it's still like, you know, the rage engine I'm assuming, you know, which has been their engine since, you know, Rockstar Table Tennis. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah, it's the same thing that powered Red Dead Redemption 2, which still had like that Rockstar movement in GTA 5. So, right. I mean, this is the best that engine has looked from a visual standpoint. Maybe not so I much as like lighting. character animation. Yeah. Uh, it looks great, though. Yeah, no, it looks fantastic. It'll it'll be very good. Uh, but all the way at the end, they say uh, coming 2025. Yes. Which is a while. Uh, it's been confirmed. It's coming out for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. Uh, has not been confirmed for PC yet. Which probably won't happen for a while. That's upsetting. Because that's yeah. where I want to play it. And uh, yeah, Rockstar has been known to drag their feet on the PC version. Yeah, which is surprising. But I think it's because of cheaters. Probably. Yeah. Uh, so so that's... that's I don't like that. I don't like that I'm going to have to get it on uh, a console. And then... Uh, I don't want to have to buy. I don't want to buy it again. So if I get yeah. it on Xbox, I'm only going to play it on Xbox. Right. I'm not going to even bother. Although there might be some some crossplay, some crossplay with I think PC. They probably have some crossplay at it this might point. Be. Well, yeah. doesn't Grand Theft Auto isn't that part of the Rockstar Social Network? Weren't they on Epic? I think they were on the Epic Game Store. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. Actually, I think I ha- I think it was like free on the Epic Game Store, and that's why I have it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the press release uh, also had a brief description of the game itself. Grand Theft Auto VI heads to the state of Leonida, home to the okay. neon-soaked streets of Vice City and beyond in the biggest, most immersive evolution of the Grand Theft Auto series yet. So that leads me to believe that like Vice City is only one location, and then that there will be other cities we're gonna get tom petty coming like demonetize us with his zombie hands you playing that um that leads me to believe there's gonna be like other cities that you can like fuck around and beyond vice city the GameSpot trailer has 17 million views and the ign only has three um 
But like the official has like what? Like 95. 95. Million. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so will we see Wolf Den Dad in the game? Potentially. Very, very possible. Very possible. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be great. Uh, we're not going to see much about it for a really long time. Yeah. Uh, it said 2025. Uh, I would imagine it would be somewhere around like March because, uh, it has to, uh, it seems like they're targeting the fiscal year 2024, uh-huh. which ends at the end of March, 2025. See, I would assume, you know, fall. Only because GTA Five came out in like October mm-hmm. when it came out. I mean, I don't. I mean, it's Rockstar. I don't think they care. Mm-hmm. Take Two probably cares. Their parent company, but well, they, they're the ones who said they're going to make one point six billion in the right, next year. True. Uh, do they think they're going to make that off of pre-orders? Maybe. Is that even possible? Don't they no. not get that company? No. Don't, don't they not get that money? No, not until the game actually comes out. Yeah. So some something's some. It's also possible that they're targeting March. And they miss it. Yeah. But that would upset a, a lot of people, mm-hmm. I'm sure. They bought 5M. The mod scene going to be interesting if, if it can support console. Uh, they also, I don't know who 5M is, but they bought um, the company that does the, uh, there's this thing called No Pixel. It's like the server where, yeah, they, yeah. where they do the uh, role playing. And they mm-hmm. bought that company that like does that. Yeah. So, um, or or they're working with them or something weird. So like, there's gonna be some wacky like mm-hmm. online role play. That's five M. Okay, it's five M. We we're talking about the same thing. <laughs> it's gonna be great. It's gonna be very good. Uh, I hope the online comes out when the game comes out. That that would be nice. Yeah. But I don't. I don't know. I also hope it's not gonna be a uh, hundred dollars. But I yeah. This, I think it might be there. I mean, $100. it's looking likely. But we'll see. I hope not. They could get away with having Grand Theft Auto 6 and then Grand Theft Auto Online. Having them yeah. be two different games and selling yeah. them both for $70. Um, and I feel like people wouldn't be as upset as if they said that Grand Theft Auto 6 was all of it and cost, you know, over $70. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I wonder when we will find that out. Probably, you know, we're probably not going to hear anything more about this game probably until 2025, honestly. Like, they're going to be radio silent on this for another whole year. Yeah, uh, there's so much hype around this, and uh, they really didn't have to do this. Yeah. They should have just, I mean, it probably would have leaked. They Yeah, I think that's the thing. There have been, like, all these, like, leaks and stuff Mm -hmm. previously, so they probably, like, we got to do something. We just got to, like, give them something to shut them up. That's the problem with, like, the games industry and, and, like, media industry in general. Like, they make everything so secret, but, like, you don't give us anything. And that's how, like, rumors and conspiracy theories start to spread. You know, the the less and less you give us, the more and more we're going to, like, run wild with, like, baseless accusations and, like, thought. Or try and try to find something. Yeah. So, like... We understand, like, the need for secrecy, but, like, there's only so much. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of uh, YouTubers dissecting the hell out of this trailer. I saw uh, a Polygon posted a, a video. It's, like, all the different people, like, oh, 10 Easter eggs in the GTA 6 trailer, 20 Easter eggs, 100 Easter <laughs> eggs in the GTA 6 trailer. I mean, it's got 95 million views in a day. I mean, yeah. it, it would be, it would behoove you to jump on that bandwagon. Yeah. I'm reading. I just saw this right now. Uh, Linda Yaccarino, the the woman who they said to run Twitter, but really she's just Elon Musk's. Like you know, in case everything goes Hold wrong, on. he he can blame her. Okay. Um, poor woman. I I feel so bad for her. Um, she asked Rockstar to post the trailer on Twitter, like properly, uh, to the point where people found out that like, in re- in replies to the original post, like the uh, Rockstar's post is gone. Like they're they're hiding it, so you have to actually like go to their Twitter account directly. Like you don't see it in a normal feed. What's the? You don't see their trailer. You don't you don't see the trailer because they posted a link to YouTube. Oh, yeah. that's fucked up. And then eventually Rockstar did post, um, the trailer on Twitter. Directly. They should have said no. They should have said fuck you. Well, they don't need to do that. I as as Brian Altano pointed out on Twitter, this is the, you know Rockstar is the same company that. 
you know, puts a Twitter parody in the game called Twatter. Yeah. So obviously, obviously they do not care. They will probably continue to make fun of this company in their game. Yeah. So. Yeah, they should. They, there, there was a, a moment there where they could have done a big old fuck you. Yeah. Because they, there's no, there's no benefit to putting that trailer on. on yeah. Uh, Especially when so many companies are like not doing that. Yeah. For very specific reasons. Also, there's a weird thing on Twitter where you you put a video up and people can repost the video, but it doesn't count as a retweet. Like yeah. if like gets embedded in it, uh, it's weird. Yeah. It seems like other people are reposting it. Anyway, uh, that's Grand Theft Auto Six. I'm sure it'll be good. Yeah. Uh, Can you imagine if it sucks. That'd be awesome. <laughs> it's just That'd be like, so great. This game is bad. I mean, it'd be like Starfield. Everybody waits fucking ten years for this game to come out, and then it comes out and it sucks. No, there's a big difference between like Starfield sucking and then Grand Theft Auto Six sucking. Yeah, it's the difference between the biggest game of all time and the second biggest game of all time. <laughs> Elder Scrolls is one of the, isn't it one of the top ten best selling games of all time? Elder Scrolls, not Starfield. Yeah, yeah same company. All right, who's the new? Who's 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 the old Rockstar games? All right, who's Rockstar Dan, what's co- Dan Hauser's Rockstar co-founder thing? Dan Hauser's next projects are a graphic novel and an audio drama. Absurd Ventures, the new creative studio from Rockstar Games co-founder and ex-creative director Dan Hauser, has announced its first projects. As it happens, neither of them are video games. Uh, the first of these two new universes is called American Caper, which will debut as a graphic novel. That's a pretentious word for comic book. It will <laughs> focus on two normal but damaged families who are mired in a world of corrupt business, uh, inept politics, and bungled crime. Comic book artist Simon Beasley, uh, who has done ABC Warriors and Lobo, will be illustrating the graphic novel. That's a good get. Um, the other project is a 12-episode audio drama that's already in production. A Better Paradise is described as a near-future existential suspense thriller. Absurd Ventures is working with well-regarded audio company Q-Code Media on the project. Absurd Ventures plans to reveal more details about both projects in the coming months. However, referring to both American Caper and A Better Paradise as universes suggests that the company has plans to expand them into transmedia enterprises, uh, which may include video games. Uh, Meanwhile, we're just days away from the first proper glimpse of what has been keeping Hauser's former colleagues at Rockstar busy, um, the GTA 6 trailer, which we just talked about. Yeah, this seems to me like they are trying to come up with some creative works that they can then spin off into a video game situation. Yeah. I mean, part of me is like, why not just start with video games? But yeah, I mean, Dan Hauser is used to working on it with absurd budgets and absurd teams uh, absurd meaning like the the size of them he, he probably doesn't have that right now yeah so he's probably like it makes sense to start small and then work your way up to a video game yeah and they have like a little proof of concept or or, or something yeah uh take two did this with comic books they they started a comic book yeah. arm to try to make stuff that will eventually turn into video games i don't think any of those comics ever made it to i don't think game. so either so and i'm pretty sure they're not doing that anymore yeah uh, so there you go. That's what Dan Hauser's doing. In case you were a big Dan Hauser fan, yeah. When you play this new Grand Theft Auto Six and you realize it sucks, you could be like, "Oh, I wonder what Dan Hauser's doing." I mean, this will be the real heart of Grand Theft, Dan- Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto Six is like is missing Dan Hauser, is missing Laszlo Jones, is missing Leslie Benzi. You know, a lo- you know a lot of names. Yeah, I know people. It's missing a lot of people who like made the previous Grand Theft Auto games like you know as popular as they were. Mm-hmm. So we'll see if you know the game can stand on its own. Or if those people were integral to the making of them. I mean, there's thousands of people working on these games. Right. But there's still like, you know, a few hands that like guide the project. Mm -hmm. You know, there were like hundreds of people worked on Metal Gear Solid, but Kojima is the one that kept that ship, you know, in the right direction. Yes. Okay. Uh, Let's talk about how upset sega is about sonic superstars yeah sega says sonic superstars had a weaker start than anticipated sega has stated that sonic superstars didn't sell as well as it hoped during its release period during a financial results briefing presentation held this month sega sammy holdings president and group ceo uh, haruki uh, satomi said the game had a weaker start than sega had planned but hoped that things would eventually pick up 
Sonic Superstars was released in October, which was a slightly weaker start than we anticipated, he said. Uh, but in reality, when Sonic IP sells the most is mainly November to December, and more than 90% of this title's market cost will be spent in the Thanksgiving and holiday season from November onwards. Although the financial results announced Although in the financial results announced today, we are forecasting this title sales uh, slightly weaker with the view of the status of, sorry, with the view of the status of start mentioned above, we plan to continue our marketing efforts to sell on the same level as Sonic Frontiers. In a Q&A session following the presentation, Satomi was asked why he felt Sonic Superstar sales ha have been slower, have been lower than expected. Satomi replied that the game had been released during a busy period uh, but that he was hopeful it could continue to sell because it was because of the genuinely positive reception uh, from critics and players. We believe that the impact of other companies' major titles uh, released at the same time is significant, uh, but we plan to expand the promotion towards the holiday season, especially in the overseas market. Both the Metacritic score and the user score are high are higher than Sonic Frontiers, uh, and we what? and we would likely uh, we would like to continue to sell firmly. Sonic Superstars has a 76 uh, Metacritic score on Xbox mm. Series X, 73 on PS5, oh, okay. and 71 on Switch, with the average user rating of 8.8 .8 out of 10. And now what does Frontiers have? I don't know. I mean, Frontiers. 76 is not bad for a 2D Sonic game. 71 for Frontiers. Wow. This is a worse game than Frontiers, <laughs> like objectively. Uh, so I saw the, the headline on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, the headline was Sega has admitted Sonic Superstars sales are lower than expected and pinned the blame on going up against other big names. And then I tweeted, I think the game would have sold a lot better if it was a better game. I don't know, just a thought. And then I muted the tweet. <laughs> <laughs> but I came back and uh, yeah, no, there are people who really like Sonic. Yeah. I really like Sonic. And I will tell you, this was not good. I mean, I think the big thing is the fact that it released a week before Mario Wonder and Spider-Man 2. But especially Mario Wonder. It would have sold better if they did not release it at the same time as Mario Wonder. Yeah. For sure. Because that took up people's time. Yeah. It would have sold even more than that if it was a good game. I don't see... I don't... This idea that it's going to sell at the same level as Sonic Frontiers, though, like, there's no way that's going to happen. This is a, this is a 2D, yeah, side-strong Sonic game. Those are usually seen as, like, side projects or, like, you know, inessential compared to, like, the big 3D epics, like, like a Frontiers or even, like, a Sonic Forces. So honestly. Sonic Mania, people loved it, but I don't think it sold that great comparatively it sold good but yeah. like compared to some 3d stuff i don't think it did that yeah good. so th that that's upsetting because that's a great game yeah uh sonic forces not a great game. not a great game but sold I, well though yeah so that's what i'm saying that like sega is kind of being incentivized to release crap yeah but uh, i think they know that like you know they can't keep doing that with sonic because, I mean, like, a 76. I, I think Sega at this point is like, you know what? We'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> I went through a lot of uh, emotions playing through Sonic uh, Superstars. One of the only games I beat this year. Really? Yeah. Uh, and I got all the Chaos Emeralds. Right. Uh, I went through a lot of emotions because I liked it, then I didn't like it, then I liked it again, and then I hated it. Okay. <laughs> um. I think that it the, the problem is it's such a simple game mm -hmm. that it really sucks when there's things wrong, when there's right. things that don't feel right because mm -hmm. of how simple the game is. Um, if there was just a little more care and effort put into it and a little more quality testing and, and some thought put into yeah. a lot of the aspects, I feel like it could have been something really great, but um they didn't do that and then i and then i was switching back and forth between that and sonic uh, and and super mario wonder right and i was like what the fuck guys <laughs> like you could this could have been you try to see what the sales numbers are for mania and wikipedia doesn't have it it took a long time for it to sell yeah like it didn't like when it first came out it didn't sell a lot but it it sold 
a couple million over time. But I saw, I, th- I think it, it's it's only like three million or something. Like that. That's the number that's yeah. sticking out in my head. I mean, that's a good amount of games for a two D song yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was looking through the tweet replies to me, mm-hmm. and uh, it's 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 back and forth. Some people are like, "Yeah, it could have been great." Uh, some people saying they liked how the Chaos Emeralds give you special powers. Mm-hmm. I liked that too. Some people saying they hated how that how right. the Chaos Emeralds gave you special powers. Um, a lot of people saying that they liked the game. I can't imagine that. I think they just like Sonic. <laughs> um, a lot of people saying it would have been better if it was cheaper, which I also yeah. kind of agree. I think $60 was a lot to ask for a game like that. Uh, and that's pretty much it. All Sonic games feel samey to me. I mean... To a point. I I get it, but... This could have been something good because they did do things different. Yeah. Uh, but they didn't really... Uh, capitalize on it because like what well, i've said this before one of my biggest issues is that the cast emeralds give you all these abilities once you get all the cast emeralds they take all the cast emeralds away from you <laughs> it's like so fucking annoying yeah. <laughs> anyway it was on sale for black friday yeah so if you were curious about it if you want a 76 game <laughs> nothing wrong with this some of my best friends are 76 games <laughs> Uh, John Crawford says, for me, some of the worlds and superstars are super cool and super fun. Some of the boss battles are great too, but then there are annoying slow parts of precision platforming that just don't suit the game style. Still decent overall. So there are every, it's weird because after playing that alongside Mario wonder felt really weird because yeah. there are parts in every world in Sonic superstars where they make you do something weird and wacky and like different. Mm-hmm. Like there's a shmup part right um and mario wonder did, did it so much better like like here's a level let's fucking do something wacky with yeah. it uh and sonic superstars tried that and and it it didn't it didn't work out at all right also there were a lot of horrible boss fights and i've in, heard uh, that's like the big thing is like the boss fights are like the worst part of the game there are some very bad boss fights. Yeah. again once you get the chaos emerald once you get supersonic there's a boss that takes your rings away so you can't yeah. do supersonic anyway uh now we can talk about xbox yes uh but first Original Spiff, thanks for the 21 months. Did anyone talk about the 3D Sonic game added to Apple Arcade yet? Yeah, we talked about how we just downloaded it. Yeah. Sonic uh, Dream, Dream Team. Team. So I'll be playing that later. Willow Davis, thank you for the raid. Oh, hello. All the Willows people. How you doing? Welcome welcome to the Xbox podcast now. I think your, GP, your external GPU is sitting on my laptop cable. Oh. Oopsies. This bitch is heavy. You should plug that into... <laughs> To your laptop. Yeah. There's nothing in it. It wouldn't yeah. do anything. Where the hell am I going to put that thing? I don't know. That's, that's a you problem. <laughs> Bob, if I send you my Miu Mini, uh, the answer is no. Uh, <laughs> would you do the GB Pocket conversion? I actually have one for that, but I think the screen might be fucked up. I'm not sure. I have to... I have to... I gotta. I, I keep doing this thing where I get an idea for something, buy all the s- materials for it, and then never touch it again. So I gotta stop doing that. All right, I'm good. You're good. <laughs> I'm good. You got everything going on. Yes, there? we're all okay. okay. All right. We're well, talking about Xbox now. Yes. Uh, Microsoft stopped announcing Xbox console sales because it cares more about content services. Yeah, we. Yeah, of course. I smell a lie. Uh, Microsoft <laughs> stopped announcing Xbox console sales some time ago. A move most uh, believe was at least in part because they compare poorly to sales of PlayStation consoles and Nintendo Switch. But according to one Xbox executive, that has nothing to do with it. Speaking at the Wells Fargo 2023 TMT Summit, Xbox Chief Financial Officer Tim Stewart insisted Microsoft decided to quit publishing console sales because console sales alone do not paint the full picture of the health of the Xbox business. About six or seven years ago, we stopped giving console volume. We stopped giving console volume externally, he said. And at first, it was like, what are you doing? You're the Xbox business. You're not giving us consoles. Uh, that makes no sense. Uh, But it was really the first point of us saying, no, no, it's about content services. 
our business is PXP. Uh, that stands for the product of price and qual uh, quantity. Uh, more cut, more, more customers spending more money. And that's really how I think our, that's how really how I think about our model. So when we talk about content and services externally, that's our key performance indicator. And for that number to go up, you need more gamers and you need more gamers spending more money. Um, and we've really focused on that with our external teams at, sorry. And we've really focused on that with our internal teams as a, here's how we grow the business, go bring more users in and find ways for them to play. And it goes, and it goes a little bit too. And my last point here is about the business model. Uh, we call it business model optimization, but really business model diversity. And if a gamer comes in, uh, they can subscribe to Game Pass. They can buy a game digitally. They can have they can have an advertising. They can have an advertising to fund their game that way. And so, however they want to monetize, they're trying to find a way for them to spend money with us. And we've seen that as a very, very good accelerant in the in this content and services landscape. That's a lot of way to say we don't want the sales of the Xbox console to be the focus of what makes the Xbox brand healthy. Yeah, because uh, they can't be doing good with uh, console sales. Yes. They can't be doing good. And... I kind of believe them when they're saying that uh, they're, I mean, it. you know that they've been focusing on other things like subscription services and yeah. stuff. So when they want to report to their investors and stuff how well Xbox is doing, mm -hmm. they have to include all of that stuff. So uh, if everyone's looking at console sales, they're going to look bad yeah so it only makes sense for them to be like uh, instead of looking at that let's look at the whole picture yeah but that also means they could uh only report the numbers in a way that sounds great yeah like okay game pass might be doing very well but you know that still doesn't answer the question like how many xboxes you have on the market because mm -hmm. a lot of people still think in order to use game pass because it's called xbox game pass you need an actual Xbox. People might not be subscribing to it because they don't know you can play it on PC or on your phone. Yeah. So there's a lot of marketing things they could do differently yeah. with that. So, and also too, like it's well known Microsoft sells their Xboxes at a loss. They yeah. don't make profit on it. So they are just bleeding money for these consoles. And if, but if they're making money on the subscription services, then they really don't need to make the consoles anymore. Yeah, I think that it's possible that we have a future where they are not making consoles. Yeah. Or I think it's more reasonable to expect them to just not care about the consoles. Like they'll make a console as like a honorary thing to be like, look, we're in the console race. We're right. one of the three console manufacturers. But in reality, they are hoping that you will just buy the game on PC or Xbox or play play it wherever you want. I think yeah. I think that they are focusing on developing ways for you to play it in as many places as possible. Well, I mean, they did just buy like a thousand studios, mm -hmm. so they have all these teams that like need to make games and stuff. They got to start, you know, doing stuff with them. And it's either you know we have all these internal studios that could finally make good xbox exclusives or we become a third-party publisher which they kind of are but also aren't so that's another thing is that they could just decide you know what consoles aren't our thing mm -hmm. we are just a j massive publisher now yeah <laughs> um i forgot about this we should talk about this though okay. um we got a lot of microsoft stuff to talk about yes um you want to do the app update yeah i forgot we should talk oh wait is that the the xbox mobile app is that yes oh it's oh yeah it's okay. in the docket okay i didn't think about that okay, okay. i'm moving yours it's the same article yeah uh i didn't okay last week yes x uh, microsoft updated the xbox app on pc so it's not mobile it's a PC app. I for, meant for mobile handheld. handheld PC, yeah. Uh, the Xbox app on PC now has a new compact mode specifically for Windows handhelds. Yes. 
Uh, the company has been testing the compact mode, but thanks to an update to the Xbox PC app, you can now try it for yourself, according to an Xbox Wire blog post. The big change for compact mode is that the side the sidebar collapses down to, into icons, meaning that the sidebar takes up less real estate. Uh, the new mode should work well with devices like the uh, Asus ROG Ally and Lenovo's Legion Go. And Microsoft says is working with Asus and other manufacturers to ensure that compact mode is enabled by default on your handheld. Um, the Xbox PC app will also now only show unread notifications when you look at the notification drop down and it's getting a gamer service repair tool to help you troubleshoot issues there are a few improvements for xbox consoles too including the ability to pick specific japanese keyboard oh nice so i immediately tried to do this uh on my lenovo legion go Uh uh-huh uh can't do it can't do it okay uh it just refused to update and there's like a way you go on their website and you download the update mm-hmm. refuse to update there either uh it kept like erroring out and doing all the shit and then and now i think i'm i had i uninstalled the xbox app yeah tried to reinstall it and it wouldn't so now i just don't have an xbox app but what about on your ally didn't try you know what i did instead what i just put the steam in big picture mode <laughs> And I set it to launch in big picture mode by default. So now there when I go. turn on my Lenovo Legion mm-hmm. Go, it just is a Steam Deck. <laughs> and I don't know how the Xbox app works. What if I want to launch Valorant, let's say, which is not an Xbox app. Right. That's actually, I take that back. It is part of, there is Game Pass functionality. Yeah. What if I want to wa- launch Fortnite, let's say? Yeah. Would I be able to do that on the Xbox app? Like my uh, my plan is like I want Microsoft to have their own launcher on yeah. Windows handhelds. That would make them so much better. That would make them so much easier yeah. to recommend. Um, and I don't think Xbox allows you. I don't think I don't know if the Xbox app will allow you to open up other apps that aren't Xbox apps. Right. Whereas Steam, you can oh, you can have things as non Steam games. Yeah. And it's it's awesome. It, it it works just like a Steam Deck. Everything just works. It's great. Mm-hmm. So I just did that, and I think that's just what I'm going to do instead. Now another thing, you look at this. This is what it looks like, right? Yeah. You look at this. Yeah. You see that little arrow right there? Yeah. What do you think happens when you click on that? Go back. I think you're right. I think it does go back. <laughs> like, look, the whole reason, the whole thing with compact mode. Yeah, well, is that let it, me open it up again. It collapses the icons on the left. Right. That's all it does. That's right. all it's doing is that. Why doesn't the arrow do that? I thought the arrow, because I thought that's what that would be doing. I don't know. I, I was really excited about this, and then I realized it's just the same app. It just the sidebars collapsed. So who even cares? Well, I'm sure it helps. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But I, I, I need a full Windows UI that is right. that is specifically for games. That might be harder, you know, than anticipated because you're basically building, you know, because Windows has a very distinct UI. Yeah, and they probably have to like not like rebuild it from scratch, but like enter in new code to create an entire Windows well, we experience. Talked about it last week. The tiles. For Windows, what, 7? 8. 8? Yeah. Windows 8 tiles. Yeah. Just that. That, that. that loads first, and then the whole OS is behind it. Right. You know? But that's like... That would be great. That's like a whole other GUI on top of like the actual operating yeah. system. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I yeah. wouldn't mind this if uh, it loaded first. Right. But I think it still loads Windows, and then the Xbox yeah. app loads. I want your... I want to just be in the handheld ecosystem right as it is right now when i turn on my lenovo legion go it takes a while and then steam os opens Mm -hmm. or or steam big picture mode so i'm not satisfied with this update also because i couldn't fucking do it so i'll have to try it on my uh rog ally i heard other people having similar problems uh and they said the only solution was reinstalling windows which i refuse to do 
And I have heard other issues with Xbox. Like I think Wood has never gotten Game Pass to work on PC. Hmm. It just it just it just won't let him log in. Anyway, um, sixty bit Gambit. Thanks for thirty one months. Snake Eater. Thanks for the hundred bits. I had no idea, and it surprised me. My Samsung Smart TV has an Xbox app that I can stream games from without a console hooked up to the TV. Kind of cool. That is cool. That is cool. I think that's uh, something Microsoft will be focusing on too. There yeah. are a bunch of smart TV integration stuff. All right. Uh, where are we? Microsoft wants Game Pass. Yes. On Switch. Uh, so at that same Wells Fargo TMT Summit, Tim Stewart uh, said, uh, it's been a bit of a change of strategy, not announcing anything broadly here, but our mission is to bring our first party experiences and our subscription services to every screen that can play games. That means smart TVs, that means mobile devices, that means uh, what we would have thought of as uh, competitors in the past, like PlayStation and Nintendo. Stewart said that Game Pass is a high margin business for Microsoft, along with first party games and advertising. Uh, These are all areas that Microsoft plans to expand into significantly in the time ahead. Uh, The executive added that buying Activision Blizzard helps Microsoft get there faster than they might have been able to do on their own. Uh, for the advertising part specifically, the Candy Crush mobile game series from King, which is now owned by Microsoft, is deeply embedded with ads and microtransactions. Uh, for Game Pass on rival consoles, it makes sense that Microsoft would want to do this because it would expand the reach of the subscription service to a much larger audience. Uh, whether or not Sony or Nintendo would allow Game Pass on their console is another question. For its part, Sony previously blocked EA Access, now called EA Play, saying it did not represent a good value for PlayStation users. Yeah, I mean, I would love nothing more than Game Pass on the Switch. I think when, like, when we saw like Ori and the Blind Forest go on Switch, and like the fact that like this was the early days of Game Pass, and they said like you can play the game on your Xbox, your PC, or your phone. Like everyone's like, oh, the next step is the switch. Like that's what people have wanted since they announced it. Yeah, you know, that would be great, but it would be a bad business decision from Nintendo because what you, you would be allowing people to buy to to use their Xbox subscription to play a game for free on the Switch. Nintendo doesn't make any money off of that. Well, Nintendo made money off of the sale of the console. Barely. There's that. Um, if you own a Switch, you're probably going to own a couple Mario games. Okay. You know? <laughs> Think about it. No, seriously. You're saying it would be a, a marketing thing for, it, for for them to allow Xbox Game yeah, Pass to I don't think. I don't think Nintendo allowing Game Pass on Switch, or more likely the Switch competitor, I don't think that negatively impacts Nintendo's business at all right. because you still need to get a switch you, you're probably buying again multiple switches you know you're definitely getting nintendo games because people buy nintendo consoles for nintendo games well there that's the thing there's an argument to be had that if you're like a pc gamer mm-hmm. and you are you want to play ori and the blind forest everywhere and you're like oh wait i could play my game i can use my game pass subscription on a switch uh-huh. i'm gonna get a switch yeah and then what's this mario about you yeah. buy mario games and now all of a sudden you're a nintendo fan yeah um, but I think if anything, it hurts Microsoft mm-hmm. because a lot of people I've seen, they have a PS five and a switch. Mm-hmm. They don't have an Xbox. And for them, if Microsoft went ahead and said, we're going to put game pass on switch, that gives people even less incentive to go and buy an Xbox because they can just play it on switch. Yeah. But it gives them a lot of incentive to continue their game pass subscription. Right. You know, uh, and that's all they want. They just don't want people to cancel their game pass subscriptions. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the right now 130 million people have switches. Yeah. So, uh unless you encounter people like me who have seven, <laughs> then then there's some overlap there. Let's say 100 million people have switches. Right. Um they will then be incentivized to get Game Pass and get and play their games through that, not through the eShop. If there's games like Ori and the Blind Forest and like mm-hmm. Cuphead and stuff like that, that's yeah. what I'm saying would be a bad value for for Nintendo. But if their goal is to grow, uh, then yeah, it would be interesting to see 
people who don't have switches move over to it specifically for the game pass but i just don't think there's many more people who don't have switches you know well it's all a moot point because during an interview with windows central uh, microsoft game ceo phil spencer provided an update uh, mentioning how there are actually no plans to bring game pass to playstation or nintendo here's exactly what he what he had to say we have no plans to bring game pass to playstation or nintendo it is not in our plan interesting he probably had to say that yeah are there emails saying that he did there were emails saying he wanted to buy nintendo oh okay yeah we're not moving the game game pass to nintendo we want to buy them i'm sure that at there's there's somewhere deep in the bowels of microsoft there's a timeline for like phil spencer and satya nadella and like all the other like higher ups at microsoft are like at what point do we just give up and put game pass on switch like that is in that is on the board well I, it has never been taken off the board it is on the board they just need to find a time to pull the trigger i think that's not their call i i think microsoft would love to have it on the switch mm-hmm. it's nintendo that's the problem again i don't necessarily we've talked about this before how Xbox and Nintendo have a relationship. Yeah. But it's really it's Xbox a, is given a lot to it's Nintendo. A lot, it's a definitely a one way street. Yeah. And Nintendo's Absolutely. not contributing like at yeah. all. Yeah. That's I, I I feel like they want it and Nintendo is not gonna give it to them. And PlayStation would never. No. PlayStation, yeah. no. They're they're like, I, fuck you guys. The big thing, what they should do, mm-hmm. is they, there should be some sort of handshake agreement. And Game Pass goes on Switch. This will never happen. Okay. Game Pass goes on Switch. NES and SNES and GBA Switch Online games go on oh, Xbox. Oh, that would be sick. Yeah. That would be cool. I think that's what you do. I mean, you, you have to have a Switch Online account to play the Nintendo games on Xbox. You have to have a Game Pass account to play the Xbox games on Switch. I think that's the business model yeah. that needs to happen, you know, with the good partnership. That can, you know, put some fear in Sony right there. They're partnering up. Yeah. That's the smart business move. Is it going to happen? No, because Nintendo, famously stubborn company. That would be really cool to yeah. be able to play Nintendo Switch Online stuff on my Xbox. Yeah. That would be great. Even though I have an Xbox that's hacked and can do whatever yeah, I yeah. want it to do, but I would still <laughs> much rather play it legitimately yeah. if, I, if I had the ability to. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's the future I want now. I'm full of good ideas. Uh, is that all the Xbox stuff? Uh, yes. Wow. So much, so much happened, and yet so little. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Capcom confirms more Resident Evil remakes. Are co- oh, yay! How, right. how many could there be? I mean, zero. Uh, the original, which already got a remake. Uh, zero. Oh co- yeah, wait. So. Yeah, wait, hold on. I'm having a stroke. Okay. So on the GameCube, yes. we had Resident Evil 1 remake. Yes. And we had Zero, which was the same kind of game. It was the but prequel was a, to 1. But it was yeah. a brand new game. Yeah. What other... Were there any other remakes around the GameCube era? It was just, was it just no, one? It was just one, and then they ported 2 and 3 and Code Veronica to GameCube. Those were ports. Okay. Those are not okay. remakes. Okay, I understand. Yeah. So, and those those go for a lot of money now. If you find, if you see them like buy them they're very expensive i did not know that. yeah um so yeah after the success of resident evil 2 3 and 4 remakes capcom has confirmed plans to continue the trend although stop short of announcing which resident evil game is next in line for the remake treatment at a playstation partner awards event in japan attended and translated by ig in japan resident evil 4 remake director ya- yasuhiro uh anpo where, where are we? Oh, Anpo. Yeah. Anpo. Uh, thank you. Said the company will announce its next Resident Evil remake in due course. Uh, yes, Anpo replied uh, when asked if Capcom wants to keep making Resident Evil remakes. Uh, we've released three remakes so far, and they've all been received very well. Since it allows a modern audience to play these games, it is something I am happy to do as someone that loves these older games and wants to continue doing more. Uh, what game we will remake in the future is something that we will... We would like to announce in the future, uh, so please look forward to it. They were basically asked if they want to keep printing money. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess one. I guess Resident Evil 1 is, is going to be the next one. Well, I think, I mean, logic dictates they did 2, 3, and 4, so next to do you do 5 and 6. F- but they should, should not do it. 5. 
Six, they should pretend doesn't exist. Yes. The Code Veronica. The big one is Code Veronica. Code Veronica, they need to P do. Code Veronica, I think, out of all of them, probably needs an update the most. That I would play. Yeah. That I would be excited for. Because I never did play that one. And a lot of people around the time that it was out yeah a lot of people were saying that that was their favorite resident evil game. yeah and i never and got Code a chance veronica to like in terms of like the greater overall resident evil story or more if you care about that stuff code veronica is the actual resident evil 3 resident evil 3 yeah. is more of like a side story like that's the actual that's the actual story that progresses the plot of the overall resident evil series is it because they got to deal with uh with sega like to, to well, put it on Dreamcast? <laughs> Is well, that no, why? Well, so the, they had a deal with Sony that uh, numbered Resident Evil's debut on PlayStation. Oh, uh, okay. So it was originally just going to be Resident Evil Nemesis, but when they heard that Code Veronica was going to be like the next big one, they added the three to Nemesis to make it like a mainline Resident Evil game. That doesn't make any sense. What do you mean? So, Code Veronica is the actual Resident Evil Three because it it it's, it continues the story. Yes. Um, but it was released on Dreamcast and what else was it? Just Dreamcast? It originally was just a Dreamcast game, right? Yeah. So why was it just a Dreamcast game? Because the at the time the Dreamcast had the power to do what they uh, wanted to okay. do in the game, okay. and eventually got ported to ps2 as code veronica x right and that's the version you can get now on like 360 um it's subsequently on xbox one um i think that no that's not on switch but like that's the most available version now is code veronica x so right and the play uh, uh resident evil 3 was just because they were like anything on we just have to put a three on it because it's, it has, it's, it's if you're gonna Sony do another thing. numbered resident evil yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's okay. So they had a deal with Sony, and that's why that's three. But they wanted to do Code Veronica, and yeah. they wanted the most power that they could, so they did it on Dreamcast. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Now I now mm -hmm. I'm all caught up. Uh, Resident Evil Zero, no, we don't need that. You can, no, you can forget think, that one too. I think that was good, but like you don't need it. I think Resident Evil One Remake and Resident Evil Zero should stay as they are with like the fixed camera angles and like all that, because those two games, especially the Resident Evil One Remake, that is the best distillation of classic style resident evil tank that, controls yes that still exists and is still playable today because mm -hmm. like that was resident evil up until resident evil 4 yeah i in on one hand i love how modern games have been kind of all following the same sort of control scheme and stuff mm -hmm. um but on the other hand, it's making things very stagnant. It's making things feel very vanilla. Yeah. So having a game like Resident Evil 1 Remake, where you move around in a weird, unconventional way, yeah. is, is, is interesting. And it's unfortunate that we don't have games like that yeah. anymore. I think, and I've been saying this for a long time, they should just stop remaking Resident Evil games. And just, if anything, just remake Dino Crisis. Yeah, because, we should get a Dino Crisis. Because, like, yeah, it would be the same thing. It would be like a Resident Evil 4-style remake of Dino Crisis, but it'll have dinosaurs, and dinosaurs are very different from zombies. Yes. <laughs> I would like to see Code Veronica be remade. Uh, yeah, but if anything... Then do Dino Crisis. Yeah, Code Veronica makes the most sense, but just fucking do Dino Crisis. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Sony's uh, taking away all your money. Uh, something like that. Uh, PlayStation to delete tons that, of TV shows users Mike already Rowe? paid for. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, it makes sense because um, the stuff they're deleting is uh, discovery content. The promise okay. of digital media uh, is that it can last forever, pristine and undisturbed uh, by the forces of entropy consistently buffering um, on the material world. Unfortunately, a mess of online DRM and licensing agreements means that we mostly don't own the stuff we buy digitally. Uh, as as most recently evidenced by the fact that Sony is about to delete Myth, Mythbusters, Naked and Afraid, and tons of other Discovery shows from PlayStation users' libraries, even if they already purchased them. The latest pothole in the road 
Uh, Neiman Marcus ad. The latest pothole in a row in the road to an all digital future was discovered via a warning Sony recently sent out to PlayStation users who purchased TV shows made by Discovery, the uh, reality TV network that recently merged with Warner Brothers in one of the most brutal and idiotic corporate mer- maneuvers of our time. Uh, their words, but I agree with it. Um, due to our content licensing agreements with content providers, you will no longer be able to watch any of your previously purchased discovery content and the content will be removed from your video library. Uh, Read a copy of the email that was shared with Kotaku. Uh, It linked to a page on the PlayStation website listing all of the shows impacted. As you might imagine, given Discovery's penchant for pumping out seasons of relatively cheap to produce but popular reality TV and documentary based shows, there are a lot of them. They include, but are not limited to, uh, hits such as Say Yes to the Dress, Shark Week, Cake Boss, Long Island Medium, represent <laughs> Not Long Island Medium, Deadly Women, and many more. Uh, is there any way I could save this content? Asked one Panix PlayStation user over on Reddit. I use a PS4, but I have bought many seasons of shows such as Dual Survival that I do not wish to lose. I actually I was under the impression that since I own it, I wouldn't I would never lose it. Uh, movies and TV shows first became to the PlayStation Network in 2008 via the PlayStation 3. At the time, it was possible to transfer content you bought between devices for viewing on things like the PlayStation Portable. So to remove that option, beginning with the PlayStation 4 and beyond, now es- essentially anything you buy on the PSN, whether a PlayStation 5 Blockbuster or Police Women of Cincinnati, real <laughs> show, uh, is essentially just on indefinite loan until such time as the PlayStation servers die or the original copyright owner decides to pull the content. So, uh, I, when I first saw this article, I, uh, uh, erroneously assumed that the name of the service that we were losing Mm -hmm. was called PlayStation discovery. Not (laughs) that it was discovery TV on PlayStation. Yeah. Um, it specifically shows you buy on the PlayStation Network from the Discovery Channel right. are going away, and okay. there's nothing you can do about it. That's very strange. That's very strange that, uh, I mean, things like that happen, but it's really weird that uh, Sony just does not give a fuck. Like, that seems like something that Sony and Discovery needed to make some sort of deal about. <laughs> and I'm surprised that they they haven't. I mean, I haven't heard of this happening with like other providers. As far as I know, you can still get them on iTunes. You can still get it on Xbox, on the Microsoft Store, on Amazon, on like all the other video platforms out there. This is only in regards to Sony yeah. and the PlayStation Network. When I heard it was Discovery, it didn't shock me because this is the same company that put Batgirl in a vault somewhere yeah. for you to never see. And, uh, that Scooby-Doo movie they were making and the fucking Wile E. Coyote movie starring John Cena that they just canceled, (laughs) you know, that was done and people were like viewing and like saying it wasn't bad. So this is, yeah. So the fact that this is Warner brothers discovery doing, it doesn't surprise me at all. This, you know, virus that's just spreading, (laughs) you know, throughout the entertainment industry into like the video game sphere. But it is indicative of a much larger problem yeah. in that the digital stuff you own, you don't actually own it. Yeah, there should have been contingencies here. Yeah. Like if you oh if you if people bought it, we need it on our servers so that they can continue to yeah. to download it. At least for like the next ten years until mm-hmm. until there's no more people trying to redownload it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You know, because it's shit like that that leads to people just wanting to pirate your stuff. Yeah, you know? there, yeah, there, there should have. There, we, we, we need to uh, have better. Uh, I mean, this whole thing is still uh, new to people, so I hope that in the future, uh, some executives realize this and they build these contingencies into the deals that they have. I mean, probably not because, you know, it's all about like making the most money possible. Mm-hmm. And building contingencies seems like a waste of time. Again, you know, bringing back, you know, David Zasloff, he put Batgirl in a vault as a tax write-off because he figured he'd make more money that way than if the movie actually got released. Meanwhile, he thought releasing The Flash was a good idea. (laughs) That movie didn't make any money. They tried to sell it as an NFT to try to get profits (laughs) from it. I heard 
very bad things. I will never that. forgive that man for canceling Batgirl in favor of The Flash. Uh, all right, last thing, analog update. Yes. Uh, I thought I was like, oh no, the analog duo. Should I care? No. <laughs> The Analog Duo will be begin shipping December 11th and will be delivered before Christmas. An email will be sent out to all customers uh, with a pre-order for any address changes. Any Duo address changes need to be sent in by December 8th. The What's Duo, the Analog Duo? That's their Turbo Graphics system. Right. It does the the Hue card cartridges and it also has a disk drive. So wow. you can play the Turbo Graphics disk games. It's cool. I would love to have one if I owned any Turbo Graphics games, which I do not. Yeah. Um, white w- white analog pocket docs. Well, hold on, you're cut. Slow down, slow your roll. Okay, I'm um, sorry. First off, there's analog pocket restock. The uh, analog pocket will be restocked on December 4th. That was yesterday, and will be delivered before Christmas. Additional pocket restock will go live on December 8th um, at eight at 8 a.m. Pacific, and will ship starting in February of 2024. Um, oh, so and, is it sold out already? It might be. Um, and yes, Bob. An analog dock in white. <gasps> it is a limited edition dock available uh, December 4th alongside the pocket restock. That's probably gone already. It, it is It is already gone. Yeah. You cannot get one by Christmas. Yeah. So fuck you. Uh, all in-stock orders placed before December 11th, uh, 2023 will be delivered before Christmas. Um, update to Pocket OS. Uh, pocket OS 1.2 will be released early in December. Uh, it fixes many important bugs, adds new controller support, updates Nano Loop, and adds open FPGA developer features. OS 2.0 will release before Christmas, featuring original display mode support for open FPGA and a new CRT, CRT Trinitron original display mode. Oh, a Trinitron. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, I would like to point out that the uh, white version of the dock mm-hmm. is $30 more. Yes. That is very, very dumb. Yeah. I mean, the special edition versions of the other, uh, of the console were also $30 more, yeah. but this is a dock. Yeah. And it's usually only $100. Mm-hmm. So charging $30 more is sucks. a lot it's, of money. Sucks, yeah. And also, it's just white. It's mm-hmm. not like it's transparent. It's not mm-hmm. like it's glow in the dark. It yeah. is just white. One of the basic ass colors that they offer. Yeah, that's very stupid. I don't like that at all. Yeah. Also, uh, why did it take this long? I don't know. I know I'm surprised. I I could have assumed that a white dock a white dock was part of the launch lineup. Yeah, I was surprised when I saw this. I was like, yeah. wait, that wasn't available already? Because again, it's not the the white one was available at launch. It was yeah. black and white. Do you have a white one? I have a black one. You have a black one. Yeah. I also have a black one. Oh yeah. What you happened? also have the glow in the dark one. I also have the glow in the dark yeah. one. I got a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, and last last bit, um, the Pocket Adapter Set uh, release date. The Pocket Adapter Set has been delayed and will be shipping in late February 2024. We apologize for the inconvenience and appreciate your patience. We are looking forward to getting these into everyone's hands. And note that Pocket Adapters are supported with Open FPGA. As always, if you'd like to cancel your pre-order at any time, uh, we have no questions asked, 100% refund. Please feel free to contact Analog Support at any time. So what do I have? I have the Game Gear adapter. I think that's the only one that was released when um when it went live. Okay. The adapter set, like the whole set, is a uh, Turbo Graphics 16, uh, Neo Geo Pocket, and uh, Atari Lynx. Okay. I don't think I have any of this. No. I have a, all of these cables. That's what it is. I have the freaking Game Gear adapter, and then every cable imaginable. Yeah. Okay. Uh. All right. That hey guys, that's all the news. Hey, that means oh, oh. Do you think it's is that playing? Did that play? Oh, it did play. Okay. Uh, all right. That means tweet week time. Here it is, and tweet week time. Okay. It's this. Uh, this is from. This is discussing film. Says West Ball says he wants his live action Legend of Zelda movie to be like, like a live action Miyazaki movie. Right. And then it was quote tweeted by Samuel Dietz. And it's a person whispering into another person's ear. Just animate it. I mean, they're not wrong. They could just, they should probably just animate it. I think, you know, we're seeing an animation revolution 
Um, specifically, Guillermo del Toro is like getting out there selling people, we gotta make more animated movies. Animated movies are great. They're not just for kids. Look at my Pinocchio movie. Look, look at it. Look at uh, the new Ninja Turtles movie. It was it was art. It was cinema. He actually said that. Um, oh, wow. So, yeah, so like there's a big push for like different kinds of animated movies that fall outside of like the Disney style animated movie. And I think a Legend of Zelda movie would be the perfect movie for that. The perfect example of that. Um, but again, I think like there's something about a live action adaptation that like sets people's prestige meters going off, you know? Yeah. No, I, 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 I understand. Yeah. Uh, I would like to see Guillermo del Toro back in video games. I think he's like given up. He's given up, but because, I, I, yeah. I hope that there's some I would, uh, yeah, faith I think, instilled on him. Again. I think like he could definitely like with the right people make a great video game. Yeah. But he was supposed to make Unsane with THQ. THQ went out of business. He was going to make uh, Silent Hills with Del Toro. That fell with, sorry, make Silent Hills with Kojima. That fell apart. So he, he, I think he thinks he's bad luck in video games. Yes. Uh, it's just a hard industry to make anything in. Yeah. Uh, Scoober, Scooberto? Uh, from last week's Wolf Den podcast says, Hi, Bob and Will. Started listening this year. Big fan. Bob, I wanted to get into repairing old game cartridges and old handheld consoles. If I like it enough, maybe even modding. <gasps> Any recommendations on what kind of solder or tools I should get for a beginner? Thanks. Um, I got a kit on Amazon that was like 20 bucks. Just get one of those. It's twenty. It comes with solder. It comes with a, a soldering iron. You'll be fine. Mm -hmm. It's not a great soldering iron, but for twenty bucks, it'll get you, it'll get you going. Then yeah. eventually, you can upgrade to something a little better. Um, if you're gonna be repairing old uh consoles like a Game Boy, uh, just just do the just do the screen mods. It they're surprisingly easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the best way to learn is to just jump head first into it and just and just do it. And for cartridges, uh, the easiest thing to do is just replace the battery on a Pokemon cartridge. Yeah. That's the e it's it's two solder joints. You just rip the battery out, put a new battery in. It's great. Just make sure you don't want the save file. Yeah. If you want the save file, you're going to lose I know it. there are ways to like back up that save file. There's even ways to swap the battery and not lose your save file, but it's like pretty complicated. Um, Yeah. Oh so. no! You do it while the system's on. Yeah. You 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 uh you swap the battery while the system's on, which uh, I don't recommend doing. Yeah, that. don't do that. <laughs> there are products you can get that dump the save, which are pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I think the easiest thing is to just not yeah. care about the save file. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's my that's my advice. Uh, Tiller from last week says will are there any good comics you're digging right now personally really high on kill your darlings from image and mark wade's world's finest book so mark wade's world's finest batman superman is actually my favorite book on the market right now so good on you if you like that check out his uh sister series the world's finest teen titans set in the same era and it's also very good um the current wonder woman series by tom king it's three issues in and it's fantastic um i'd be remiss if i didn't mention uh superman 78 the metal curtain um uh, written by robert venditti and illustrated by a friend of the show gavin gidry issue two came out today it's perfecto uh i'm reading a lot of dc right now not because i have anything against marvel it's just what's interesting to me at the moment um and those are the big ones the world's finest books wonder woman uh superman 78 the middle curtain i'll also throw in uh tom taylor's nightwing is excellent so there you go read all of those uh i was gonna write this in the chat but i'll just say it otaku sam says what's the eta on the desk mats uh we have new desk mats over at wolfdenapparel.com uh they are making it into port <laughs> i think thursday so I don't know what that means. Okay. Uh, I'd imagine they might start shipping on Monday. Okay. So I hope that's the case. Uh, anyway. Uh, D Bumble. I just don't believe that a subsidiary of a $274.5 billion company is an indie studio. There's just something not right about calling that indie. I agree i agree that it definitely confuses things 
Yeah, I think there needs to be a better, clearer definition of what an indie game is and what constitutes independent. But also, like, how much is the budget on that game? Like, it, the owner of the company, the company that owns the company, right, is three hundred billion dollar company. But how much are they allotting to that one team? Well, budget and the budget of the game, the size of the team, yeah, I think is important. Yeah, you know. But again, like, you know, independent is supposed to be like outside of the AAA studio mm-hmm. space, and you know. Two hundred seventy-four point five billion dollars is certainly a triple A studio. If that, if they even have access right. to that, you know. Charlie Fenn says, "From my experience, Xbox wasn't huge growing up here in the UK. I'm still on the younger side, I guess, twenty six, but Baby. most what? <laughs> Baby, I'm going her oh, but but most people I know." Most people I knew had a PlayStation console and a Nintendo handheld at least until the Wii. The 360 gave it a slight boost, but even then, not by much, and then haven't, and they haven't really, and they haven't exactly had the best years since then either. I'll be honest, here in America, Xbox didn't hit their stride until 360. Yeah. But then, like, after 360, they had a massive drop off. So, everyone, everyone I knew at least switched over to PlayStation. Yeah, the 360 was the heyday of, yeah. of Microsoft or, or I, Xbox, I mean. It's interesting they bring up uh, most people they knew had a PlayStation and a Nintendo handheld. I know, I might have talked about this before on the show. I know for a fact the PlayStation 1 outsold the Nintendo 64 by a lot. It's like 110 PlayStations to like. I think 40, 110 million PlayStations, like 40 million Nintendo 64s. However, growing up, all of our friends had Nintendo 64s. Mm-hmm. All of them. I think I knew two people who had PlayStations. Yeah, I knew and one. That was it. Yeah. So the reality doesn't mesh with what our reality was yeah. in this weird little Long Island bubble that we were in. Yeah. So that's something I'm trying to like, I'm still trying to like figure out like how that happened. How like on Long Island, Nintendo 64 was the king, but everywhere else in the world, it was PlayStation. In America? I, worldwide. I, I think worldwide, it would make a little bit of sense for Sony to do very well. Yeah. Uh, here in America, I understand why Nintendo did because we were familiar. And then, and well, everything. I think even still in America, Sony outsold Nintendo. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah. Uh, J- J- Josh Springer, whatever your name is, each Japanese train station might also have their own mascots too. I know that each prefecture has a mascot. Right. I didn't know the train stations do because we talked about last week how they all have their own jingle. Mm-hmm. I did not know about a mascot. Uh, all right, now we're in the chat. Okay. Hello. Hey, Wolf Bros. That's us. Bob, you've made a Game Boy with Wood and with Elliot. When can we expect Game Boy build with Will? Maybe Will's a dream Game Boy. That could be uh, when we have nothing else better to do. So... Do you remember a while ago when I like pre-ordered the GameCube shell? Oh yeah. On the pretense that like if I use the credit card you you can make content on it. No, I don't remember that part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. We bought you a game a yes, GameCube shell. Do, okay. You you shit you sent me the link on Twitter and I said, "Can I put this on the company card? You can make a video out of it." And you said, "Yes." Okay, I did not <laughs> I don't remember that at all. I that's been running on like 2 years now, like the pre-order. And I like emailed them like, "What's going on?" I I saw like we're at the home stretch and I haven't heard back from them yet. So, oh, I didn't even yeah. There's shells now. Like there's shells available. Are there? Because like this I've is when like shells. they first came out. Game. It's like transparent, right? Yeah, yeah. Those those are the ones. It's it's. I've seen it before. I've got to like because literally bought... handheld legends has them. You could just buy one. <laughs> are those the ones? Uh, sixty five dollars. Well, I spent a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this one's good. I gotta, I gotta check because like. I bought it from Castlemania Games, but then Castlemania Games became like something else. Oh, really? Yeah. AliExpress they're, has them. They're like Rondo something now. 
I bet you whoever you bought it from is just buying just it from AliExpress. From AliExpress. <laughs> 42 bucks. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know much about the one that you pre-ordered. Maybe it's better for some reason, but you yeah. could just you could just buy it on handheld legends. They're available right now. Okay. Clear, clear purple. Well, clear black, clear white. I, well, I might as well like just figure out what's going on. I don't want to waste company money here. <laughs> okay. I mean, we could do that. We could. Uh, so I want to redo this whole set. Yeah. Eventually. Um, the only th- issue is, uh, like you know, like doing a. There's no. There's no like surface to like, yeah. do something on. So that might have to change. But anyway. Uh. What else? I do wonder, there is a Game Boy Advance XL screen mod, if those exist. Game Boy Advance XL screen mod. Make a Game Boy Advance screen bigger? I don't think so. Hmm. I haven't seen anything like that. Bob, I'm surprised you didn't talk about Super Nintendo World Donkey Kong Country expansion opening in 2024. That's because I'm not that interested in that. <laughs> I feel like they're making a really big push for like Donkey Kong to be the next big thing. Between that and like the rumors of the spinoff movie with seth rogan mm-hmm. like i feel like big things are coming for dk yeah um yeah i don't know why <laughs> i don't i don't of all of them like yeah. i feel like a hyrule world would make a lot more sense maybe um bob do you have the ambernick rg35xx plus they claim that i it has been shipped to me but i gotta check the po box i haven't received it um that hopefully will be next week's video if i if i have it any thoughts on the video game awards this week? No, we we did our uh uh rankings of what we yeah. think should should win, but uh I mean, we'll probably do a recap of it yeah. like on the show. I'm good. we're going to do one on Friday. The the Nintendo podcast this week has been moved to Friday specifically so we could talk about the uh the game awards. Right. And then I'm sure we'll do a brief one on the Wolf Den podcast. Hey, Bob, what keyboard do you recommend that has light-up keys to see in the dark and has adjustable colors and does not feel cheap? Uh, if you want a cheap one, cheap, meaning like $100, mm-hmm. Akko has some pretty good ones. 8-Bit Do's keyboard's really good, but it doesn't have light-up keys. Um, if you want a real nice one, the GMMK Pro. Type in exclamation point keyboard. And then you you'll get a couple keyboard recommendations. The GMMK Pro is uh is awesome, but it's like five hundred dollars. Yeah. Also, uh, if you go to KBD Fans, you can go to Prebuilt. They're pretty expensive, but there's a lot of great ones over there. Uh, oh, Nufi, yeah, Nufi has some good keyboards too. What else? <clears throat> with xbox wanting to bring their services to more consoles or at least showing interest do you think they'll work with valve to to make a game pass app for steam i don't see steam doing it i think so i think that that's something they've probably been thinking about well when the steam deck came out like microsoft was working on like a way to get windows running on the Steam Deck. Like, there were all those, like, firmware updates. So, Valve was working on a way to get Windows to work on the Steam Deck. Yeah. Also, Xbox, at launch of the Steam Deck, had a tutorial on their own website, xbox.com, yeah. their own support on how to get Game Pass to run on the Steam Deck. Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. And uh, it was extremely complicated. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that they are working on a way to get the app to just straight up work on mm-hmm. Linux. Yeah, and then it and then it would be easy from there. Um, GMMK Pro is overpriced. I own one. It's mid at best now. Newfie or Keychron? No, Keychron. I don't like. I burned through two of those. I think that's one I have. Okay, I burned through one of those. (laughs) No, I've had three. I think. Right. I think I've had three. Um, Newfie is pretty good, but I I. The GMMK Pro is expensive, but I I think it's uh, I think it's reasonable because you see I have the GMMK Pro right there. It's the one that's lit up. Yeah. Next to it is another one right. that was also f- like four hundred dollars. Jesus Christ. And 
they're comparable. Yeah. I think that they're both extremely good. But again, you could just go to kbdfans.com and look at the pre builts and you could find a pretty great one over there. But they're mm-hmm. also pretty expensive. And if you want one that feels like that and is also customizable, but you want it for uh, very cheap, get an Echo keyboard. There was uh, Corsair made some really nice cheap keyboards, uh, and then they stopped making them. They made them for like a year and then stopped. I don't know right. what happened. Did you explain the cookie milk? No. I made a uh, Instagram video. Okay. That I haven't posted yet. So, no, I have not explained the cookie milk, and I won't. So, there. Until I post the Instagram video on Instagram.com slash Wolf Den Coffee. Is that the one? I don't know. It's your account. <laughs> Gamer Dad Coqui, thank you for the 300 bits. Hey, Wolf Bros, can't wait to watch the podcast tomorrow on YouTube. Have a great night. You have a great you night. You have a great How night. How about that? How about yeah. You have a great night. I'm also thinking, here's a new thing. I think uh, I'll just say it. I think at the beginning of next year, I think we're going to dual stream this to YouTube. (gasps) Sacre bleu. (laughs) Uh, Junior Moser, thanks for the prime. Hey, Bob and Will. Glad the podcast isn't ending anytime soon. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Did you see Digital Foundry's video on Batman Arkham Trilogy Switch port? Uh, Not yet. I didn't watch it, but I did see the title and thumbnail, and they didn't seem to like it. Uh, I forgot whose video I saw on... Oh, it was Modern Vintage Gamers, uh, but he just did Arkham Knight. It seems like Arkham Knight is the problem, yeah. which we all assumed it would be. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. Um, He tried overclocking his Switch, trying to get it to run smoother, and that still didn't work. So there's a lot going on with Arkham Knight um, that needs to happen before it can even like be functional Mm -hmm. so all right we're 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 done thanks for hanging out thank you for tuning in thank you for watching us thank you for chatting with us as always the wolf den podcast is every tuesday night at 8 p.m eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolf den for now (laughs) if you can't make the show for any reason at all we always put it up as an archive version over on our youtube channel youtube.com slash wolf den podcast so you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you like but if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on any and every audio podcast service such as apple Podcasts and spotify but no matter where you get this show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms um, I might co-stream the Game Awards on Thursday uh, here on twitch.tv slash wolfden. Uh, I'll have a video out hopefully on Thursday as well about the Ein Odin 2 finally. It's very good. I like it a lot. It's also very expensive, so it's hard to recommend. Um, thanks for being here. Uh, I'm going to raid Jackson. He's on. He's playing Resident Evil uh, 4 because he's going through all the Game Award games. I'll see y'all later. Where's the buy button? There it is. Bye!